Okay, sure, sure. Okay, I'm gonna send it to the government afterwards. How's uh, yeah, yeah. how's how's your show been? How's my show been? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of amazing that it's still going, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's it's going. Uh, I don't know. I don't really pay attention to the numbers or anything that much. I just try to refrain from looking at those. But I mean, there's a core following of people that still seem to be watching fairly regularly. Uh, so you know, it's it's not stand up. It's not the same, but it's an approximation i guess yeah. right so yeah yeah do you think it's like uh keeping your muscles tight for comedy though like yeah yeah it yeah i i do think well it's changed i mean i think it's i think i've improved as a i don't say performer but like in just in certain like ways of doing a show like that because when i started doing it way back on st patrick's day like three three and a half months ago now it feels like five years I guess but uh um I didn't really know how to uh like I thought I was doing stand-up right so the first mm -hmm. show I was like looking around like I'm not like normally on stage I look around a lot like no you can't do that you gotta like it's like make love to the camera right you just look at the camera you focus on the camera that's what you're looking at so just in that regard in terms of playing to the camera and knowing how to like, like a late night host giving a monologue, right? That's what they look mm -hmm. right at the camera. Like, hello America, right? Like that kind of thing. So yeah, it has, I, I, I'm, I like to think that if and when we inevitably start doing comedy again, like actually on stage that uh, maybe I won't be as rusty as some other people because of, cause I'm, cause of this, because of the show, yeah. So, what if, yeah. aren't you concerned that you're just gonna get used to not having like any actual laughter? <laughs> Well, I'm sure a lot of people are making jokes right now. Uh, <laughs> well, there are dozens and not, dozens. Of yeah. Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, it's 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 different, right? Like it is, and that's what like a lot of people. I haven't done really straight stand up. I mean, I've done stuff that would approximate stand up on the show, I guess, right? And I've done a couple of my jokes from my nightclub act. But uh, it's just, it's not even the same. So like, I mean, cause people I know who have done actual shows, that's the one thing they'll all say to me. It's like, I just can't, it's like, I'm not used to just doing it in silence, right? Uh, so I, I don't, because the media, the, media, the media are two different kind of, not really that comparable things. I mean, yeah, we're talking and we're trying to be funny, but it's not the same as stand up. So I feel like, no, I don't, It'll be nice to actually hear laughs again from real humans, like in a club. Uh, that would be kind of, I, I kind of miss that as a very needy comedian. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get a laugh uh, one day. <laughs> someday, someday I'll do it, Andrew. I think yeah. so. Hey, you know when you it's scratch your hope. beard, I can like it sounds really clear because your microphone's right there, so it sounds really good. Yeah, I got us. I I noticed when I did uh, back like three weeks ago. I did Simone's show and uh she kind of does something similar to you it's just her interviewing a, some i really I, re, I watched it after and uh i yeah i did i don't even realize how much i touched my face because you know we've been bombarded we told, don't touch your face don't touch your face and during that interview i just kept doing this oh like <laughs> had a cake almost Me too. Like, stop it's like a nervous twitch or something it's like you don't even realize you do it right like yeah i don't know back in the day uh Jeff McKay, who doesn't, he doesn't do a lot of stand-up anymore, but like he's an old buddy, right? And uh, he used to touch his hair so much. And one night we watched and we counted, I forget who I was with. And afterwards we're like, dude, you touch your hair like during your six minute set like 31 times. It's like, no way, no, I did. You don't even realize you're doing it, right? It's like a nervous stick or something. That'd be so fun to do, I think. Touch your hair 31 times? No, I mean, to see, to notice somebody doing oh, that. I imagine you were yeah. cracking up. That sounds good. Oh yeah, because we got we we I think we actually put a like before the set we were like okay do you think like the over under I think we put a twenty, and yeah I forget <laughs> who took the over and who took the under but whoever took the over definitely won that bet. That's cool. Yeah, you know, hey. you know you're a degenerate gambler comedian when you're gambling on stuff like that. Are you like a <laughs> a gambler? No, not at all. Actually, I no. hate gambling. I find it very boring. I find it very boring. It's a vice that I've never. Uh, understood uh, the only vice <laughs> hey when how long have you been doing find, uh, comedy I, 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 I find casinos depressing uh kind of hot though well yeah so i started 
Uh, I started about 15 years ago, but then uh, I always give a rambling caveat. Um, Everybody does. As, as is my want, as I've been wanting to do. I'm, uh, want. So, like, yeah, I started around, like, two, 2005, but, like, when I was 30. But the first year I did comedy, I only did 13 shows. So, you didn't get as good as quick. We back then I found like now there's a lot more opportunity even here in Ottawa um, and then there was like a year or two like not that long ago like the, the last year or two I was in Toronto before I moved back to Ottawa two years ago like I didn't I did comedy maybe four times in that two year span like I basically quit for a couple of years I just had kind of given up so uh, like around yeah 2016 17 so <clears throat> Yeah, it's been 15 years, but it does, like, it's in fits yeah. and starts, right? So, like, it's only in the last, there have been bursts where it's been fairly busy, right? Where it's, like, every night or close to it. Like, you know, the last couple of years or maybe a couple of years before I moved to Toronto or whatever. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah, 15 years. Or so. <laughs> what, what were you doing in Toronto, like, when you, uh, when you kind of quit? Because you kind of you moved there for comedy in the first place. Right? Yeah, that's the irony, right? I moved to Toronto for comedy, and uh, then I just kind of stopped doing it. Like, what happened was uh, Toronto just didn't really work out for me, and I mean, a lot of it's my own fault. I just felt like a, I, I, I had a hard time fitting in there. I found it really clicky the scene, but I guess that's inevitable, right? Um, I was working at a job I really didn't like. Uh, that was kind of one of those vampire jobs that just kind of sucks up all your energy and your entire life. And it was like, I, I had to get up. Like I was getting up at like radio morning DJ hours. Like I was, I was going into work at like, you know, as early as like three thirty, four 4 AM sometimes, but never like sleeping in, I go, I'm going in at 7 AM today. So point being, it's, you know, not really conducive to the comedy lifestyle when you've got a job where you got to wake up at four in the morning. So uh, I just would find all kinds of excuses not to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'd come back to Ottawa every now and then and uh, Howard would throw me on uh, if I were in town and I just, it would be, I'd be like, oh yeah, I forgot that I actually like doing this and I'm kind of okay at it. Like why am I, why, you know, so that's kind of what motivated me to move back to I quit that job I didn't like and I was like well why am I still in Toronto what's you know like I mean I'm in my 40s uh I'm not gonna be the next you know big thing or whatever I, I mean like I'm in my 40s right like you know unless there's you know I'm uh, you know anyway my point being like what why like what is what is keeping me in Toronto right yeah uh so yeah I just I I like it better here I don't know I mean I guess that's pandering but um it i i legit do like people think i'm crazy when i say that like i actually like ottawa more in toronto because like you know we're fed this notion that toronto is excitement personified and ottawa is boring and dull and why would anybody want to live in boring old ottawa when, you know you could you could be in toronto the city that never sleeps blah 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 but i just i found toronto to be really uh you know, I mean, I'm not the world's most outgoing guy, but uh, like, I it was really hard to even not even in a comedy context, just just making friends. I felt like I just would hang out with people I worked with. That was it. It was really depressing. I just, you know, one of those guys who like your entire your work life becomes your entire social life. Yeah, weren't yeah, there other sucks. like weren't there other Ottawa comedians that have moved at the time? Yeah, well, that's basically, that's, those are the only people I hung out with in Toronto, other than work people, were like comedians I already knew from Ottawa. And you're in still, it like, was, sorry, go ahead. So, so no, no, go, go ahead. No, go. no, no. No, it was just, because, I don't know, I probably, I don't know if I bellyached about this on some old show, but uh, there was this weird thing that would happen in Toronto. It, it happened to me a few times, and it's like one of these things where you just suck it up and shrug it off, but in hindsight, it's kind of like, why, you know, I don't know, like, getting big time or I don't even know if that's right. But like, so like I do, I'd be doing a spot at Yucks, right? Like the mm -hmm. downtown club in Toronto. I'd just be doing like a guest spot on a Friday night or a Thursday night or something. And like one of the other comics on the show, you know, would be like, they come up to me and be like, Oh, Hey, I'm so-and-so. And I'd be like, Hey, I'm Trevor. And I'd be like, like, I worked with you like at least five times. Like I have <laughs> done weekends with you. I have hung out with you a lot of the time. Some, some of these people, 
I'd actually gone to have beer with them after the show and like share details of my life with them. Like I wouldn't say I was a friend, but definitely an acquaintance. You know, we got along fine. We had like, hey, good working with you. See you around, right? Like two years later, I see them and they're like, hi, I'm so and so. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? Like, really? You, you don't like, I mean, we're not best friends, but you know, I like it after the, like it happened multiple times in Toronto. I was like, maybe this city isn't for me. Maybe I'm just too sensitive. Like I get it. I'm sensitive. Okay. But like, come on. Like what the, what the fuck? Who, who does that? You think it was on right? purpose or were they just uh, like legitimate drunks? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Like maybe they're just all really forgetful people, but like if, the amount of time we'd spend together again not best but like i hung out with them for like you know you do a weekend with somebody it's at least three that's thursday night friday night saturday night at yucks and longer than that at absolute right you're hanging out with them all the time so you're kind of like hey man you're, you know you become facebook friends blah 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 right but then like you see the person two years later and they act like they've never met you I don't know, man. It, I, I guess it was probably just forgetful. I don't know. You meet a lot of people, especially yeah. if you got if you got a lot of heat. You're working every single weekend. I'm sure it becomes a blur, right? I don't know. I mean, I've done that a couple of times to people I've met before, so maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a hypocrite. Do you, do you remember when uh, when we met? <laughs> no. I think uh, I would say you almost big timed me. You almost big timed me, but the second time we met, you were like maybe the drunkest man I'd ever seen at the time. So I thought like, eh, really? Fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, but hold on, hold on. we're going. I'm, no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm, we'll go back. I'm sorry there. about that. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you just asked well, me for. I think you asked me. You asked me for weed, but I was only going up to you to ask you for weed. It was something really oh. stupid. Like it was at Swizzles, and I was like, "Drugs?" And you were like, "No, drugs." And okay, I think we found drugs yeah. through somebody else. I vaguely remember <laughs> that night. Yeah, I was pretty hammered for yeah, some man. reason. I think, or no, I maybe it was just high. I don't know. Um, okay, well, okay, but that was so that would have been right around when I moved back, right? I didn't know you before I moved to Toronto, did I? You weren't doing comedy when you were you doing comedy in thirteen? Is that when you well, started? That's the the cool thing. You were, um, I think, my third or no my fourth set was at pub 101 and you were uh, featuring i think it was like one of your last shows here because you just like your uh -huh. whole set i remember it you were just talking about like going to toronto and you riffed on like how downtown ottawa looks it was really funny mm -hmm. um then i talked to you a little bit mm -hmm. okay yeah i i'm sorry if i don't remember that no, uh, I, might see, I guess i'm doing yeah, I guess I'm just guilty of what I denigrated <laughs> other people for doing so yeah, no don't worry i i've uh, never done a weekend pub 101 okay pub 101 uh, Dan Siggy was running it at the time. Remember him? Dan Siggy. Getting oh, yeah, so off track. Him. Hold on. Sorry. No, I, I'm really curious though. Like when you came back to Ottawa, like did it feel bad? No, actually not at all. Like I know that's like the, that'd be the, you know, I guess the, the narrative, right? Like the popular narrative would be like, Oh, this, look at this guy coming back to his hometown with his tail between his legs, you know, after failing in the big city. But, and, you know, I'm as somebody who's notoriously hard on themselves, uh, even still, I don't look at it that way. I just, uh, no, I, I actually had a, believe it or not, kind of a positive attitude about it. I, like, my attitude moving back to Ottawa was, uh, I was like, okay, just, just get, just get good. Just be good. Be really good. Or get really good. You know, like, mm -hmm. become, you know... So I set a goal of like, okay, become one of the, one of the better comedians in Ottawa. Right. Like just, you know, I don't know. And so that, that's been my goal moving back. So that's, that's what's motivating me now is just to keep getting better. And it's like, cause we have a defeatist mentality in Ottawa a little bit, right. Of, uh, we live in Ottawa. So no, if anybody's any good, why would they live in Ottawa? Right. So like anybody from here is shit, but like we really, we have a really good rep as a city around the country. Right. Like, comedy wise we have a very good rep like from talking to guys who tour all around the country um you know we punch above our weight i think so that's you know i that's yeah i i don't i didn't feel no i i just i do i like it better here i know everybody here or more people and i just uh yeah like my friends are here my uh families in the area just i don't know just, it actually it's uh yeah. So it must have felt it must have felt like really good kind of parts of coming back here because I imagine when you left, right? Like I know when you left, there weren't that many open mics compared to when you came back. Oh no! 
oh, and yeah. this a lot more friendly, so lot, more, a lot more different people. Right? The scene is so much more active. Like even when I when I moved in, I moved in 2013, like March of 13, and he, at that time there was there wasn't a lot. There was the clubs, and that was. I mean, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, or I can't remember what exactly was going on at that time. But like shows would come and go, but there wasn't a lot. Like now, there's something going on pretty much every night. Well, you know. There was before yeah. the collapse of civilization. Um, yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I legit just, I've become like, it's funny, I've turned into like Mr. Ottawa now, like the civic booster, right? I'm like, you know, Mr. Civic Pride, like, gay Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, I'm yeah. happy to hear because I always think of uh, going to Toronto, but I'm really, I think it'd be like, like, I don't think it would be, I don't know. I'd be afraid of yeah. moving back because there is that whole idea. Like, oh, like yeah, but fuck it. So what, man? Yeah. Like, like I, I, cause yeah, I get it. Right. Cause I mean, a lot of comedians have moved there and moved back just like a lot of comedians have tried New York and come back to Toronto or, you know, Vancouver, or they've tried LA and they've come back or they tried England and they've come back. Uh, so what right like and as you get better where you live once you like it's less important right like they're like really good headlining comics in canada who live in the middle of nowhere because they don't have to be in the big city because they're that good that they'll get flown you know yeah so i i feel like we put too much emphasis on where people live like when it comes to that you know it's like this idea if you're from toronto you're good if you're from living anywhere else well you suck if you know why you know if you have any ambition you go to toronto but it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle there mm -hmm. like the open mics i've i've made this point before i think on simone's i might i don't know if you watch that one too but uh like anybody watching right now so but i like here's the thing um we talk about grinding, right? Like in terms of, you know, oh, you got to hit the mics and like Toronto's got so many mics and that's how you get better. But like in my experience, uh, and people get mad when I say this, you know, but like people in Toronto, but like three quarters of those open mics, okay, that like the vaunted, like, oh, you got to hit the rooms and do three, four shows a night. Like three quarters of them are just totally fucking garbage they're useless they're a complete fucking waste of time for everybody involved people will line up and clamor and show up four hours early because they don't have a job because their parents have money and pay their rent and yet they go around talking about how hard they cry yeah i know i sound like a bitter old man but you know uh and then there's you do the show and like the last open mic i did in toronto before i completely gave up it was right not long before i moved back it was just, it was like 10 fucking 20 somethings at the back of the room, all just looking at their phones, not even paying attention. Like fucking the ghost of George Carlin could have showed up and they would have just been, you know, looking. It's, it was just like, you know, it was one of those moments where like that Richard Pryor, you know, like, man, what the fuck am I doing here? I don't know if you ever heard that story, but like in Vegas when he kind of had this epiphany where he's like, why am I trying, you know, I've got to be who I want to be. It was like that for me where I was like, why am I even, why am I bothering? Why, who is this benefiting? You're not getting any better. They're not, the only thing that comes out of shows like that is like, if you get something that's legit, of like a fucking amazing joke, like it, anything that gets a reaction, it's like, okay, you better try that again. Because if you can crack that, you know, we're like, oh my God, they're actually listening to me. Just to get them to listen is hard, right? So mm -hmm. I, it's kind of like a buyer beware like yeah there's a lot going on but and you got to play the game there like I, i'm not a natural born schmoozer i'm not i i hate doing that shit i hate pretending to be like all like best buddies with people i don't even fucking know just to you know like to get on their shows or whatever and i just i wasn't good at playing that game like Hey, can I get on your show? I'm a pro. Oh, you got to come by. And it's like, oh, fuck, man, really? Just put me on your fucking, but you can't do that, right? Yeah. Like, I get, I, I know it sounds entitled, but it's like, look, again, I'm not fucking Bill Burr, but I, like, I was good enough back then to be a pro. Like, I was on the Yucks roster, whatever the hell that means. I know that, you know, that's not very exclusive, but like 80% 80, 80 of the fucking comedians in Canada are on the Yucks roster, but 
Still cool. Do you remember your first show back in Ottawa when you made the move? Back? Yeah. Uh, still, it's hard to, because, so, like, I officially moved back in March, I believe it was, of 18, like, two years ago. But I was coming back a lot for about three months before that. So, like, specifically, I'm not sure. It would have been around, like, Christmas or, like, November, December of 17. But, like, so I moved back in March. Let me think. Uh, it might have been Swizzles, actually. I fell in love with, like, the first time I did Swizzles when I moved back, I was like, I fucking love this room. It's amazing. It's such a great workout room uh, in terms of natural workout room where there's a crowd that's like yeah. when it's when the crowd is there that's such a good room it's so underrated i love it it's i've never had a bad time well maybe once but like <laughs> you know just just yeah. once you know um so yeah i think it might and i i was really excited because like like i said before i moved back in 13 that like there there was nothing like that going on here i was like this feels like i'm in toronto or new york or something like that like this cool little tiny hole in the wall of a bar that you know has got a dedicated re returning crowd a lot of the time i mean yeah some nights it's empty it's yeah fun. it's great but i've had so much fun at that place when fuck what night was it they didn't even have a show booked uh like it was i don't know what happened but then Fuck, Tavis and me, like, we basically showed up at 11, and JP was like, well, you guys want to just go up? And, like, I went up and just, I was pretty high. I think I, I just, I went off. I closed, like, Tavis went up, and I went, I forget who else, and, like, who was, fuck. I, I did, like, half an hour to, like, five people. It was, I had the fucking time of my life. I was like, this is amazing. I, you know, God, this is, I'm in my element. <laughs> that sounds so fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, really boosting Swizzles. Yeah, shout out to Swizzles. Kind yeah. of. Who was running it then? It doesn't matter. I take it back. Well, that night, nobody. Like, I, <laughs> I, I think they just they didn't even bother doing the show. I guess I didn't. It was supposed to be Haddad, maybe. I don't remember. I don't know. Um, okay, hey, so I looked you up. Okay, I gave you a little Google. And there was a video uh -huh. that Yucks posted on YouTube like six years ago of one of your sets. Okay. Oh, no. Is, is that cool to you? You don't think that's cool? I just thought that I in itself that. I, yeah. Sorry. I uh, I think a lot of comics are like this. I can't stand watching myself do stand up. Like even when I post, I'll post a set on Instagram or Facebook, and I don't even watch it before I post it. I just know it was a good set. Like I was like, I did well. This was a good set. The crowd was hot, so I'm gonna post it. I don't even. I don't, I hate watching myself. Yeah. So whatever it is, I'm gonna hate it for sure. Uh, I, got, I I got like, zero dislikes. Okay, well, that's good. So. I, I did, like, I'm bad at promotion, as you can tell, but, uh, <laughs> so that's what's going to be hard, because, like, on, like, last month, I was supposed to headline at the club, and I was going to record an album, right? And if, when I finally, you know, get around to doing it in the new world, if it happens, uh, it's going to be hard, because I'm going to have to listen to it, right? Listening yeah. to my, uh, just audio isn't as bad, but watching me, oh, I, I, I get so hypercritical, where I'm like, Oh, you're touching your hair too much. Oh, you're or like, uh, I mean, you pick up on things, right? Because like, mm -hmm. I noticed I have a tendency to sway on stage. Like, I'll kind of like, it's like I'm kind of like I'll start listing or like I'll see, you know, it's like instead of like no man, stay still. Yeah. But it's really hard for me to do that because I've got all this uh, nervous energy. <laughs> um, I heard uh, uh, Wafik told me like he recorded an album and just so much time has passed now that like. Yeah. Like just none of the material is funny. Like you have to like do it and then edit it really quickly, but then you have to listen to it back and you start to second guess everything because you're just hearing your own joke over and over again. Oh yeah. And you get sick of listening to it and you're like, Oh no. And like, sometimes this happens to me. This is the ego killer where you, you, you have, sometimes you'll have a set that you think went really well, but then you listen to it or you watch mm -hmm. it. If you do watch it and you're like, Oh man, it sounds like it's, it's so, uh, I mean, it sounds like a hack comic stock line but like it really does it's like wow the laugh seemed louder on stage or maybe yeah. it's just because you know it's a it's recorded on a phone and the room's not mic'd and then you start making up all these excuses like oh no they were laughing harder right and it's like god we're such needy fucking people <laughs> uh yeah okay but uh in watching this video of you i watched it it was a good set it went well <laughs> happy for you but uh was you, it it was at it was at yucks I yeah assume? the like, toronto yucks um, oh 
You did. Ooh. You started with a joke about the, the gout, and then it went into like a, the binge. But I noticed okay. when you yeah, yeah. when yeah. you're starting yeah, that, used, that that used to be my closer. I mean, it still is sometimes, I guess, depending on the show. It's good shit. But I noticed like when you yeah. start a set, like a lot of the time, it sounds like uh, you're almost stammering, looking for your words. Is it like on purpose? Because you do it all the time, and it seems cool. Uh, yeah. See, no, I just when I get agitated. Um, I kind of really, uh, I do talk like that. It's just mm -hmm. kind of an amplified, like my, on stage, I think, like I tell people, it's, I'm just kind of an amplified version of myself. Um, so no, I think it's kind of just, yeah, it's like not really an affectation. It's more of a involuntary, like, uh, reaction to me getting like i'm so excited or like i'm just like okay yeah, i'm really here i gotta get this point okay so like you know because i like anyone who's seen me I, I go off on tangents a lot and like i'll do like these asides that go on for five minutes and I'm like oh yeah the joke i was talking about right like it's it's like uh it's like comedy jazz i call it you know? <laughs> skip skip you know? skip <laughs> yeah yeah man feel it feel the jazz you know uh hey daddy oh um yeah so uh no, like I, uh, I just, that's what I love about my show at Yucks. Like I have the freedom, like I host it, like Trevor's Pad, uh, first Sunday of the month in the normal world. Uh, I, like I could, I, I just, you can work out stuff and I have the freedom to just try new shit and yeah, you have clout. Weird, weird shit. Why well, I say clout? It's just because it's my show, and that's I. That's I mean. You have your own it. show. That enough is a, that. That's clout. You have the clout oh, to get yeah, your own show. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's hey, I'm I'm very appreciative. It's it is pretty cool because it's the, uh, it's always it really is the highlight of my month. It's the most fun I have every month. Every Trevor's pad has been like pretty much every one has been just so much fun. And the way you dress up the set, that look, like I can't yeah. believe, when I saw you do it for the first time, I was just like, why doesn't everybody do this at their show? Like, it's so cool. It makes it so yeah, much more yours. Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, I guess it's from my like brief experience doing a fringe show uh, back like 15 years ago. Right right around when I started stand-up, I did a fringe show. And, uh, anyway, so yeah. Whoa, whoa, like, set, whoa, whoa. Set Never mind. Design, Anyways, what was the design. fringe show about? Got the shit. Uh... So yeah, it was kind of like a, a, it was a, a period piece. Uh, it was basically the, the gag, it wasn't very good, but it was like a one person show where I, I had been detained by the U S while trying to cross the border, but like, it's comically inept as to why I, it was, it wasn't very good, but, um, I, I did get a really good review in the London free press though. I got a great, I don't have it anymore, but. I did get a good review, so I fooled that guy. Uh, all I did remember is his name. His name was the critic's name. He was the critic, theater critic for London Free Press. His name was Noel Gallagher. That's a very memorable name. Oh. Not the same. Not the same Noel Gallagher. I don't think. You don't know. I don't think. Did don't you get know. any bad reviews? Like that you saw? Uh, I I don't think so. Again, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Like. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure some people didn't like it. I don't know. I like it did it well. After. It did well. But yeah. So anyway, that's I guess the whole set dressing. It's like kind of like I just you, you make it look because the gag being it's called Trevor's Pad, right? So I want to make it look like my actual place. Like I actually do live here. Like I do that gag where I'm like, hey, you know, I actually live here at the club. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, uh, if anybody has a shower, I can borrow. Tired of uh, scrubbing up in the dishwasher, or something stupid like that. Um, yeah. I'm gonna copy. I think I'm gonna copy your idea of dressing up your stage next. Uh, did you next Andrew. Up? Next Andrew's pad. No, uh, I'm down to twenty percent, so I okay. might charge my phone because that's my phone wasn't charging today. My phone sucks. It's I don't is know. It, what, is it I haven't even had this. Yeah. iPhone sucks. I haven't even had. I haven't even had, well, it's like my sixth or seventh one. I've never really had problems before with any of them, but this one is just, I've had nothing but bad luck. I haven't even had it a year. Within two weeks of getting it, I dropped it, broke the button on it. So now I have to use the old iPhone 2 floating thingy. It doesn't yeah. hold a charge. It doesn't, I don't know. Like today it was working and I have to use my phone because I need GPS because I'm a delivery guy and like the battery wouldn't charge. So like I got home from it and I was like 730 
I'm like, fuck, Andrew's calling me in like half an hour. My battery's at like 30%. It's probably going to drain. Anyway, if I get down to 10%, I'll have to charge it probably or something. Oh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll make do. We'll make do. It's fine. Oh, like, are you able to talk while it's charging or what should we do? Yeah, Is yeah. That... No, I can. I just, okay. like, I have to take my earbuds out because I have to charge it the same hole. <clears throat> uh, okay. So I'll have to uh, improvise. But, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And you've always said that. <laughs> um, that? You've always said that. Necessity I guess. Is the... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Frank Zappa fan. Um, yeah, so yeah, set dressing is, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's the extra touch. I have a big storage container at Yucks that just, it just has Trevor's pad on it. And well, that's all my shit. Yeah, it's very um, kindergarten. So this is kind of, kind of off topic, but in your set, you talked <laughs> about how like you left a government job in Ottawa, right? When you moved to Toronto, have, yeah. Like, do you have any interest in like? going back into that like could you if you wanted to oh, yeah i looked into it i definitely looked into it especially because like i mean <laughs> my life career wise since i left the government has been kind of abysmal i mean i've had yeah in terms of i certainly i'm making way less money <laughs> like i was i just got to the point where i was starting to make a bit of money from comedy right like enough that it would help out um but then as soon as that started happening the pandemic hit so like uh, yeah like i don't make a lot of money i don't have benefits uh i had both those things like uh i went to the government right out of university and i i've looked around but I, honestly i'm kind of it's careful you wish for right because like i mope and bitch about my job right now but it's i, I just fucking hate working i don't want to work i guess that makes me lazy you know a lazy socialist right but yeah I just want to sit around a cafe and talk about ideas. Um, but isn't your job now? Comedy, like, comedy, comedy jazz. So yeah, I quit and I, I do regret it. So, but like when I look at, like I'll look at government jobs and it's like the, the, just the application process now is so much. It's like, it takes a fucking day to apply. It takes longer than a day. Job. It takes so long. Oh Trevor, my I'm trying. God. It sucks. Answer 40 questions. What's your favorite color? Did you get along with your parents? Get a fucking op-ed piece published in the New Yorker. Holy Jesus, fuck, man. Just let me copy and paste my fucking resume. And then if the keywords line up, give me a call, okay? Like, what? just do like the fucking old days. I don't... I was really good in competitions, man. I won a competition for this job at Industry Canada. I was like... I want, I beat at like a hundred and some people apparently to win, to get this job. And then within two months, it was uh, right around September 11th happened because I was working there when it happened. And uh, within two months of this job that took me a year to get after this long competition where they needed me so badly within two months, I was like, I, I'm ready to fucking quit. I had nothing to fucking do. I'd be like, Hey, uh, is there anything? Oh no. And I just, I would get ignored. I would like, Oh, go to the fact sheets and uh, in the shared drive and uh, change the dates on them. You know, like that was literally a job I had given to me. Go update the dates from like 2000 to 2001. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? Is this why I went to fucking university? Like, it was a joke. It was like, I, uh, yeah, I don't, it was, it was such a weird existence. Like I made really good money. I had great benefits and like, it's again, it's cliche, but like there would be days where like, I literally, again, there was nothing. I'd be like, I have, I have no work to do. I, but when, couldn't you fucking, use that time to like work on your one man show or your comedy or list? Yeah, I, I did it's do fun. that. And that's probably, like I've said, I, it's probably a reason why I'm really good at trivia because I had all this spare time on my hands. I could like right. basically, I've read Wikipedia start to finish. Uh, <laughs> You know, so I just, you pick up things and like, I have a good brain for that kind of stuff, especially if it's sports related. Like, oh yeah, Matt Snazlin scored 26 goals in 1983. You know, like, I just know that shit. Is it, is it all sports? Um, no, the major North American ones. Yeah. I'm pretty good at sports. Too. Yeah. Like what hockey, year? Ba hockey, what year was... hockey, baseball, football, uh, golf. Soccer. No basketball? Yeah, basketball too. Yeah, basketball is probably my weakest of the big four. I know you're a basketball guy. I yeah, am I was too, just about to not... quiz you. Okay, give it, give it to me. I just got, I just got one. I want to see as a baseline. When was LeBron James drafted? 
he well he wasn't drafted he went straight from high school uh oh yeah sorry no right he was he, he didn't yes. play uh right right it would have been 2003 i think so 2000 <laughs> it's 2003 2004 that was his rookie year right yeah so yeah it would have been 2003 then it would have been the 2003 draft and then he would have started in the fall of 03 you know where he was his first his birthday is like late 84 so he wouldn't have been eligible to the draft till he was like 03 season because he would have still yeah he would have still been 17 in the year before right. well he went to it was some religious school he's from akron i know that yeah i don't know what the school is called yeah um okay so i think we kind of are similar in that like we really look, I think when we bomb, it's almost impossible to hide on our faces, right? Like we both seem to take it personally, oh, yeah. I think. Oh yeah, heart in our sleeve. Um, Lorenzo, like Lorenzo. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's quite Lorenzo, like Lorenzo. Lore Lorenzo's next level. <laughs> uh, don't get Lorenzo, me started. L Lorenzo, if, he, if he's bombing, it's like Ralph Wiggum. It's right? so it's like, funny. Hey, hey Lisa, hey Lisa, here, stop right here. You can see the precise moment where his heart breaks. Because yeah. <laughs> he'll show it. Um, yeah. But then you also, I'm know, a like very hard on my yeah. I'm a hard on my sleeve guy. For sure. I'm just wondering like how if you. I get uh, frustrated. I get really exasperated. You've, and you've you've uh you've been doing comedy like twice as long as me. Like, is there any advice like how to deal with that? Like how to make it less traumatizing every every time. Just get better so that it Ugh. doesn't happen anymore. It's not my way. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Shit. arrogant, I guess, but. No, that's fair. No, it does. Better. Like you get, you get better, and you get more confidence, and confidence begets confidence. And you just go up on stage, like, yeah, this is gonna go well. You know, you're fucking, you've won eighty percent of the battle when that's the case. But then I'm just worried, like, when you get that confidence, because sometimes you'll still bomb. Not you in particular, but you can still be confident and bomb. Doesn't that oh, just yeah. hurt a lot more now that you no, actually do? No, think you're actually, funny? no. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I I disagree with that because. Okay it's maybe my protestant work ethic but it's like i feel like you gotta sell it because especially for someone like me whose comedy is really animated right like i can't go through the motions i gotta sell it and get the old like uh jean beliveau line like uh famously like he said because he was asked you know like my god you bust your ass every night you never take a night off all that cliche shit right in hockey and, and like he said like well there's going to be people there's somebody at the game tonight will be watching me for the first time and I want to make a good impression, right? And so it's that kind of thing. There might be somebody mm -hmm. in the room. Like I've had sets where I've eaten shit, uh, you know, at clubs or whatever. And like, or, you know, stupid campus shows where nobody's even paying attention. But like one person will be like, hey, that was really good. I'm like, you, you know, and you're kind of like, you don't have to say that to make me feel better, but they're, you know, they're like, they actually seem genuine about it. Like, okay, well, you know, maybe they, they are just saying it to make me feel better, but they, you know, like, even if it feels like you bomb, I know, again, it's like Trevor here accentuating the positive. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, crazy. yeah, I don't know. I just, I like, it's the one element of my life, which I actually feel really confident and positive about right now. Right. Unfortunately, right as that was starting to happen, yeah. a fucking global pandemic hit. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not going to whine about it. I'm just going to, you know, stiff upper lip and all that bullshit. And, Damn, that uh, is positive. <laughs> like, uh, you got to, you know, like, well, the beauty of stand up is it's not a, like other entertainment medium, me, media. Like, youth is so important, right? It's like, but in comedy, it's like, I don't feel old. I mean, I guess some people, say, you know, but I'm just like, nah, I mean, I can, I can be doing this 20 years from now and still having yeah. fun, I'm sure. Comedians get better with age, most of them. Yeah, well, yeah. Except for extreme. Like who, the, <laughs> <laughs> you look at, well, I mean, who are, who are the top dogs in comedy right now? I mean, really, if you look at who have, like, he, Dave Chappelle, what, he's about 50. Bill Burr, he's like 52, I think. You know, just to, so, you know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, those are just two people I mentioned. But, but, I mean, they are, like, Chappelle is, I don't know. If he's not the biggest comic in the world, oh, well, I don't know, Kevin Hart, maybe too. I think Chappelle's past him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in terms of critical approval, yeah. But in terms of like actual tickets sold, I don't know. Kevin oh, Hart, like, no, I think you're right. Kevin, Kevin Hart sells out like stadiums, football, football stadiums. stadiums. Yeah. 
He's really funny. Which would be, which would be a re- yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it'd be really uh, weird watching stand up in a venue that big. I don't think I'd like it. It's just like you, you know, the like comics like. Sorry, there's at least like a hundred thousand people at that show that don't have a good seat. Like it's just crazy yeah. like at a football stadium for comedy. It's not great. It's like you're th- you're there to say you were there because yeah. like any there's some like I'm. Uh, I went to a wrestling show at like a mid-sized arena in Toronto. It was like maybe 10,000, 12,000, the Rico Center. And like the seats actually weren't that bad. But even still, I was like, this sucks. Like just because we were too far away from the ring. So it's like, I felt like I was like, I literally would rather be watching this on TV. Like wrestling is like, if you're not right up at the ring, which is awesome when you are. But yeah, it's the same kind of deal. Like you got to be intimate, close. You know, one time um, about wrestling, Haddad and I, like I found this casting company that was just hiring people to go be in attendance for a TV wrestling taping. Oh yeah, that was uh, Impact, right? TV yeah, TV. and the we got $50. Yeah, we got $50 per show to watch and we ran into yeah. uh, Jerry Hodges who paid $70 for tickets to be there. <laughs> yeah, so he's funny. apparently, Jerry's a very, I know a couple wrestlers and they know Jerry. I'm like, you know, Jerry, like, oh, yeah, Jerry, he's a, he's a great ref. Apparently in the indie circuit, he's a very well-known ref. I don't know. No, you should stick I've, to I've been to a couple. I've, I've been to a couple of indie shows, but I've never seen him. I, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's just you know, it's a okay. good uh, stress it, release. Yeah, I would love, I, fuck, man, I kind of, I would, man, I would, I could be like a wrestling manager for sure. I would love to do something like that, just to play. I don't know what, I don't know. <laughs> I think you'd be I would a great love, uh, colonel. I would be a good, like a white hat with a white full suit. <laughs> the, <laughs> Some racial undertones for sure. But, sure, okay. Uh, I, I, that might not be very PC in this climate uh, that well, we are in. That's just pro wrestling. White guy, white guy playing his... Oh yeah, wrestling doesn't have great race no, relations. Not at all. Not the most racially sensitive. Okay, I have one, one more real question that okay. I'd really like to know. But then I have a plethora of... Uh, Fan questions sure. for hey, you. Man. You're, I'm, you got some time. I'm here. I'm here all night. Okay. So we did. Okay. It's very specific. So we did the uh, je- like the poor boy roast show, right? You remember the one that we were both on? Yep. Okay. Um. You bombed. Yeah, I ate yeah. shit. Yeah. You ate shit. I, I I didn't come ready. I was just. I was. I don't know why. I was really lazy about writing jokes, and. Uh, and the ones I did write, I was really high. So I thought everything was funnier than it was. That's a right. problem when you're writing while high is you think everything that comes out of your mouth is like fucking comedy gold. And you're like, oh my God, this is so funny. Like, no, you're just really high. So I instead went on high writing comedy. Instead of writing it into my notes, I send it all in a text to her dad. And then he just hurts my feelings immediately. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't just asking okay. you about your bombing that's, set, though. I had a, 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 that's an interesting uh, editor editing uh, technique, I guess. Yeah, just edit, editing editing with uh, with by berating. Yeah, it hurts. Here's uh, why you're useless. My actual question was okay, so and some okay, some of the roast jokes at you, I even felt were like uh, oive, like very. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Like there were some good oh, roasts, yeah. there's right? A some... Lot, there's a lot of... Every, okay, roasting Trevor 101. Okay, you do an impression of me because every fucking comedian in Ottawa has an impression of me. Yeah. Some are pretty good, actually. Uh, fun and then you, you make a joke about how I'm so good looking. Uh-huh, okay, I know. And uh, <laughs> duh, we know that. And, uh, and you bring up my dead brother. And uh, lots of dead brother jokes. Some good dead brother jokes, I got to say. That's exactly... If you're asking, it doesn't offend me at all. It doesn't. I mean, after a while, I just, I almost start to get bored with them. It's like, mm-hmm. come on, guys. Like, I get it. Yeah, my brother died. But it's like your entire fucking shtick. And like, again, a lot of the jokes are great. So. But um, I mean, I think it's like if my parents were to hear them. Yeah. Oh. oh hey. no, I, I know what you mean. Um, and I actually didn't we're know not- that. At the time of the show, I didn't know your brother died. I wish I knew, like, so I could have roasted oh, yeah. you about it. But so they yeah, hit oh, me. Yeah. But then, uh, any, my point, like, I had a friend, she saw you, like, a, a new comic, actually, she saw you at the bar, and you looked so sad, and she had never seen a roast before, and she thought, like, you were at wit's end because of all the jokes oh, my brother about your jokes? family. Oh, no, no, no. She was no, like, she felt very no. bad for you. No, I was, uh... But I figured it was just like, no, you, you bombed no, and felt that. No, I was just, I was just depressed because I made an ass of myself. I, uh, just, because I didn't do well. 
and because again a needy but also i have a uh i won't spend a lot of time on this but i have a mental block with poor boy it's it's in my head that place is in my head i have it that's one place where i have no confidence i don't know what the fucking problem is there but i feel like and people have told me i have when i whine about it but i don't remember ever having a good show there i fuck it i eat shit there all the time i don't know why like even when i'm feeling good and confident i'm coming off like eight good shows in a row or something i'm like okay man this is batting practice i get up there and just nothing so i have i i'm really the last time i did it i bombed again and i was like what the it's like now it's at the point where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where i'm like yeah it's like i've, I've got the yips you know like i'm like like Shaq shooting free throws it's just i hope so <laughs> i think with the poor boy a lot of what works there is more like when it seems like off the cuff like i find caesar really kills it there all the time yeah whereas you yeah. always like you have like a prepared act you're saying and i can see how like i just feel like that doesn't always work there yeah but actually i surprisingly i don't have a pre i'm famously scatterbrained where like this happens to me all the time i'm going up to do like a 10 minute set i have no idea what i'm going to do till i get up there oh. i don't have i'll have like maybe a loosely drawn out list but it never i never follow the order and then i'll go off on a tangent and i'll do something i wasn't even planning to do yeah it's pretty free form so that's, yeah you know, actually seem really they, prepared to me that's crazy no it's i'm just a ranting lunatic that's all <laughs> Yeah. I'm jealous. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna hit you with the first. I think it's a bunch of joke questions that I don't fully get, to be honest. Okay. Uh, but then we'll start with an easy one. How do you keep your sunny, positive disposition? Ask Lipschitz. Well, I think I already uh, talked about it, uh, right? About how uh, look, I'm a big fan of my hometown, and I want to represent my hometown well. You know, comedy is uh, something I look forward to continue to better myself or get better at it more and more. And, you know, maybe make some money from it, you know, and just uh, look every, t the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? No, I know. That's Hamilton's question, yeah. right? Yeah. No, no, I'm, I haven't. No. I, I, in case this is the House of Un-American Activities Committee. No, yeah. I okay. I'm Thank not you. ratting. I'm not snitching on anyone. I'm not ratting anybody out either. We appreciate it. Like uh, that Kazan guy. That, remember that famous director? They wanted to honor him at the Oscars, and a lot of people were like, fuck that guy, because he was a rat. He like ratted out a bunch of people. No. Reagan did, too. That piece of shit, Ronald Reagan, he ratted out a bunch of actors. For being communist? Yeah. Well, but, like the Red Scare. A lot of people, like, they totally, they lost their livelihood. They basically were like, they never worked again. What's wrong with being a communist? Well, it was the height of the Red Scare, right? Senator McCarthy, you know, the McCarthy witch hunts and basically this, like, belief that, like, much like today, right? Oh, Hollywood's this cabal of liberal, hedonistic, like, oh, you know, like, anything goes and they're all, like, you know, they love freedom, too much freedom and, you know, they're sexual libertines and that bullshit. So, like, uh it was kind of a revolt against, you know, like they wanted to crush because the Soviets were the enemies, right? The new enemies. So like they had to crush the world at that point. It was the two superpowers. It was a clash of competing ideologies, right? It was like freedom and love and uh, like every, you know, like Rocky Four, basically. Right? Just you remember Rocky Four? No, I've you never seen any of the Rockies. Really? I don't really watch movies. Fuck. I thought I had missed a lot of movies, but uh, okay. okay. No, yeah. Well, the whole premise of Rocky Four is Sylvester Stallone, America, fights against this Russian guy who's like three times his size, right? It's like, it's the battle. And guess who wins? You'll, you're never going to guess. Was it the smaller man? Yeah. The, That's crazy, the smaller, dude. plucky underdog. Seriously, like, Sylvester Stallone is probably a, a foot shorter than uh, Dolph Lundgren, the guy who played the Soviet. No, I'm not a communist. Thank you. Uh, where do you get off? Ask Jeffrey Davis. Yeah. Well, that's a rather personal question. Uh, <laughs> mostly in my bed, hey. if you must know. Um, okay, well then, related to that, Melanie asked, how do you get off? Um, Answer that however you see Mostly in my bed. Well, how, I, I mean, I live alone, so, you know, it's pandemic, so draw your own conclusions. And I will. 
Uh, okay, this is like a real question, I think. Uh, in a different life, if you could be anything else, what would you be? Ask KB, like a CBC correspondent or something professionally. Yeah, a CBC correspondent. Yeah, yeah, I mean, or maybe a host of a CBC afternoon drive home show, like Alan Neal. Or a sportscaster. Oh, man. Yeah, it would be good. I should have, man, I should have gone in. I, I had an interest in doing that, and I did it for, like, the Junior B team in Metcalf when I was, like, 16 or something like that. But I never followed through with it. I was like, I should have gone into sportscasting. Yeah, sportscasting. Dude, I'd be people, actually... Sorry. Go ahead. Just, I went to uh, TV broadcasting at Algonquin, and I had no interest in sports at the time, but everybody that did like sports, like, they're doing well. Like, yeah. It's not too no, late, Trevor. I, it's never too late. I guess. Yeah. Hey, I'm 45. You know, like I'm going up. Yeah, going up against 20, 22 year olds. But why people? Nobody wants to hire a 22 year old. I don't. Know. Oh no! I think a lot because they work cheap, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, sportscaster okay. or maybe a comedy writer, but I mean that's kind of comedy adjacent, so I don't know. Okay, I think you'd be a good sportscaster. Actually, just like a trophy husband, like just somebody who's married to somebody who has a lot of money. I don't have to work. You just do your comedy, dear. Okay. <laughs> you just take care of your hair. Yeah, oh. well, that's a fucking full-time job. Uh, you will get to your hair later. Don't worry. I have, uh, I have a... Um, do you have more stories about delivering boxes by Jen Hayward? I tell you, there's not a question I've been less interested in hearing. Yeah, it's fine. I've talked about that enough. You got Jen, is this, Jen is the CEO of my company, the, com my, the company I work for. So, yeah. She's... She could fire you. Oh, no. Please don't. Um, yeah, I honestly, I just treat jobs as like this disposable, like I kind of don't want any responsibility. That's why I'm kind of happy doing what I'm doing, but I just, the money sucks. That's the problem. Like jobs with no responsibility tend to pay like shit, right? Yeah. I mean, you're responsible that you have to drive around and not hit anything, but I mean, that's generally not that hard um, unless you're a really bad driver. I'm not saying you're a bad driver. I can't drive. Like, really? Legally. Yeah. I thought I, you were I'm, buying a car. I'm in the market. But I think you don't have a license. If I buy a car, I'll be more motivated to get a license. I, like, I don't want to sound like millennials be like, or whatever. Like, I hate jokes like that. But I find that, yeah, like, that your generation, it's because I grew up in a small town. But, like, the idea of, like, being an adult who doesn't know how to drive is so weird to me. But it's, like, the majority of people, like, that age, I think, now. People just most, especially if you want to be in comedy. God, like, even if you don't have a car, like... Being yeah. able to at least drive is a huge asset, more than you would think. No, I, I because, know about it. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, because I grew up in a small town where if you didn't get your license when you were like 16 or 17, you were screwed. Because yeah. there's, no, there's nowhere to work. You couldn't get a summer job. You had, there's nowhere to go. Like, there's no business in my hometown. Um, you had no social life. You had no, like, yeah, it was basically your lifeline. So, yeah, like, I've been driving for, God, as long as you've been alive. <laughs> um, I've been jobs. practicing during a pandemic. I think, I think I'll be able to get my, get my license before the end of the summer, I think. It's so much harder now. Like, I, got, I was before graduated licensing. It was, yeah, I feel like it was a lot easier to get your license back then. <laughs> What's graduated licensing? Was well, what they have now, where you need to like get a G two, and then you have to right. like you know. Oh, like you were able to just do it in one thing. Yeah, well, they ha back then they had what was called a three sixty five, but it was basically just like twenty questions, and tr it was pretty basic. Like it was pretty hard not to get at least ninety percent. I don't know what the pass was, but it wasn't that high. And if you got that, then you get like a three sixty five, so it was valid for three hundred sixty five days, like your learner's permit. Mm -hmm. But you could get your full license the very next day if you wanted to and you thought mm -hmm. you were ready. So some people would just get it right away. I, for me, it took about a year because my marks were really bad then. So my dad was really like, you can't drive. Your marks suck. And I was like, fuck off, dad. And it was, yeah, I wasn't a happy kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
But then I got my license. And now you're a happy man with a sunny disposition. The world was my oyster, yeah. If you could only have one dish, which would it be? By Dylan oh. Parker. Which is a fun question, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess just the saucer-sized dish because it's versatile and like anything I eat, I can fit on it probably. I Wait, just might is, have he to do it. is he actually talking about dishes or meat, like a food? Oh, I just thought he meant dishware because of my joke about like I don't I don't have dishes. I have a in dish. My You're I right. Oh, dish. I get it. Oh Can't go tonight. Got to do the dish. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just wait. Everybody's laughing right now, really hard. I'm just gonna yeah. Let them. <laughs> let the laughter die down. Die down. Do you have plans to develop the character of Lamp Bolt, and will there be any romances involved with the appliances? Asked oh, yeah. Horny and Rochelle they, Todd. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, your character, uh, which was suggested by Dan Allaire, I believe, uh, Icon. Uh, our friend from Cornwall, um, you know Dan, right? Yeah, I know Dan more than Dan. you know Dan. Uh, I disagree Do you know with Dan? That. I don't know. I know Dan, I bet you know, I bet you I know Dan better than you know Dan. Uh, I will how? challenge you to, I challenge you to a Dan off. Right now? Well, I mean, okay, we should ask Dan, who do you know better between Andrew and me? Yeah. I don't know if he's one, he's probably not one. No, well, when we're done with the it's questions, like, I'll look up the comments to see you're not, if there's any. I mean, you're, not, you're not getting Trevor's pad numbers here, I mean, come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When maybe, I first... maybe, maybe, maybe you are, I don't know. When I started this, I directly considered my success based on how Trevor's pad was doing. Well, that's very nice to hear. I'm the barometer. Well, I was well, dominating. Tap, like it. <laughs> tap, really? Oh. Yeah, well, I had Jimmy Hunt's baby. Yeah, okay. He's a get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I had, uh, I had some gets. I had... Uh, yeah, I know you had some guests. I know. I was about 20th on the depth chart. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I was just fine. looking for the more uh, lonelier comedians. And it feels like you have enough stuff going on. Like, I didn't... Yes. Touche. I, what does I, Don I, Kelly have going on, you know? Poor lonely man. This is his own TV show and numerous CBC appearances. Yeah, what does Don and Kelly his have? Wife, his dog, his nice house. Piece of shit. His perfect <laughs> fucking life. Fuck you, Don. Uh, and I, I actually subscribed to that. Yeah, fuck you, Don. Love, love Don. I was uh -huh. just at his place. He invited me to his place. Close you don't need to brag, friend. man. Some of us don't hey, really man, have comedian I, friends. I've got some close pr You've got a lot of comedian friends. None that have their own house. Oh. When Haddad invites me over, I have to sit Haddad, on the floor. When Haddad, yeah, you invite me over to Haddad's place. It's like, okay, so we're hanging out in the roof tonight. You know? Okay, okay. Literally, yeah. yeah. I got it. So uh, I got to feed my roommate's pet crow or something like that. Uh, he has pet bunnies, I think, actually, his roommate. Um, hey, what Haddad's did you do? like a fucking character. He's like a character from Slacker. Like, he he is, looks exactly like his like, look just yeah. fully matches with who he is. Oh, yeah. He looks, he's a real life uh, Jimbo. I think he's a bit nicer than what he would look, though. Like, he's, yeah, he's he is. nice. He's, a, he, he's Jimbo. Yeah, Jimbo's kind of an asshole. He's not yeah. a bully. Right. Although when, when nice. David's in a bad mood, he's the biggest bitch I know. <laughs> really? I've never uh, never seen that. I guess well, he just hides it from me. I, I have a special way of getting under you, people's skin. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I've heard that. You've never, never to me, but I've heard that. From who? Say names. Well, I'm not saying names. Who the fuck? I've, I'm just kidding. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I really believe you. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I can be irritating too, right? No, you. Oh, no, I'm insufferable sometimes. I know. No. Hey, what did you do with the $40? Just... Asked Greg Houston. Uh, that's in reference to the sign I saw at the door in Buckingham. No. Yeah, it was, I was doing a good food drop. I wish I, I didn't have my phone. I left it in the van. And there's a sign taped to the door, and it said, uh, I will, like, in both official languages, it was like, I will suck your dick for 40 bucks. For a $40 tip, I'll suck your dick. Oh. And so I posted that on Twitter or Instagram or something like that. And then Lorenzo was like, so what did you do with the $40? You know, it was, <laughs> like, implying that I, like, hello? Yeah. yeah. Or no, God, it sucked. It would, Wait. I wouldn't have to, yeah. He, no, Wait, this he, person wanted to be the giver. Oh, he wanted to pay to suck your dick. Correct. Did you, like, you, you saw what he looked like? No. Oh. No. No, I've, I've no way. Well, that's almost better. Well, so, yeah, no, it was just weird, because 
I and like what protocol is in these economic uh, these pandemic times is we drop the box and we just ring the doorbell and go right so like I did that and I rang the doorbell and I walked back to the van and I just kind of lingered for an extra second to see if this person opened the door just to be like just to see what they look like not even not, not even in a like Oh yeah. yeah, I'd let him. I'd uh, I'd let that guy suck my dick. You know, like not in that kind of way. But 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 maybe, right? But maybe, but maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. But like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. I get my dick sucked by a guy, but yeah, he might be in my uh, top ten, I guess. Especially I if you're on the clock and he's giving you, you're making too much money yeah. to say no know, at that point. I know. It's like basically getting time double time and a half. <laughs> Actually, better than that because it wouldn't take an hour. I mean, I assume I'd be. Fuck, he, I it'd only take maybe ten minutes. Don't you think it might be tough if you've never? That's four bucks. That's four bucks a minute. That's like that's like uh, two hundred forty bucks an hour. But don't you think like? Because I I'm assuming you <laughs> haven't had a blowjob from a man. Like, wouldn't it be I tough to get into I it initially? Haven't. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, yeah, uh, I I don't know. I've never. I okay. I feel like we're going into territory here now that I I just. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, no, it's not like I, I just, I've never, I haven't really given it much thought. I don't know. So that was, yeah, Greg's question was in reference to Lorenzo's joke about what did you do with the $40? Um, and you didn't collect on the $40, I'm guessing, right? No. Okay, okay. So you're still looking. You ever wish your name was Trevor Noah? Ask Jerry Rodriguez. Yeah, that's that's stupid. A, that's a dumb question. Next. No. Yeah, I wish I had the same name as the most famous Trevor in the world. Yeah, that's great. I would sure. It'd yeah, make I comedy wish, easier for I you. Wish, I, I wish my name was Michael Jackson. I really wish I had the name of a guy that everybody thinks of as a pedophile. Yeah. yeah. Talk about, no, no, Jerry, I don't. I'm happy, perfectly happy with my TV newscaster name, okay? Yeah, you have a great name. I do have a great name. I have a great fucking name. My parents gifted me with a great name. Um, do you know Carly St. Germain? I don't know her. No. Oh, okay, okay. Well, she asked. I gather she might be a fan of your show. Anyways, she said, uh, do you miss reporting on the LRT? Who are you dating these days? And what does it all mean? What? Who? I don't know who that is. I'm flattered. If I, I thought I you knew. A, I have a fan that I don't know who they are. I don't. I, I, don't have I hope you're not big-timing her. Like, what if by chance you have met her? Yeah, I'm sorry if I have. I, I don't know. I'm kidding. Um, are you, so is that Trevor? Uh, okay, what was the first question? Uh, there were a lot of questions there. Yeah. Do you miss reporting on the LRT? No, I didn't really report on it. I just made a funny little clip that went kind of Ottawa viral. Are you still there? Trevor? his phone died should be back any second stay with us we got a couple more questions it's been pretty fun is it some good i like how it started actually talking about toronto some good insight Okay. He just texted me saying, my phone died, will charge and call you back. Does he mean like later? I can't wait till the pandemic. Just texting Trevor. Yeah, I'm looking for work. Uh, anybody knows anybody? I'm just gonna check the comments to see if anybody's watching right now.
hey, just saw Soapy Buttle won a, a Juno on the album of the year. Congrats, Soapy. It was really funny. Be funny if she was a woman boy. Uh, you know, in my day, uh, let me take some time to talk about Ryan Mullen's podcast. I've been listening to it a lot lately. lately. I listened to his episode with Jennifer Whiteford today, and uh, there was a fun part where she outs me for not knowing about the library, the Ottawa Public Library system whatsoever. And I got really upset, but then she really quietly said, sorry, Andrew, um, and I forgave her. Have you guys listened to Ryan Mullins' podcast? It's on Spotify. It's really charming. And I can see how if you just like listen to one person's thing, like I, I have a crush on him now, I think. I don't think he's very cute. But I get it. Looks like a good amount of people were watching. Damn it, Trevor. Hey, ten dollars were raised for the ball. Ten dollars were raised for the bail project. Just one person donated. Can't see who it is. But nice. Um <laughs> Okay, Trevor is Trevor's coming back. Stay tuned for some hard hitting news with two fully erect men. It'd be so like that timing would have been great for him to chime in. Would you guys sleep with Trevor? Like I wouldn't. But I, I get it. He's coming back so I can ask him three hypothetical questions. Funny. My daddy made me this cocktail. Thanks, Dad. Now it's a party. Hey, hi. Hey. Sorry about that. I knew my phone was getting lower and lower, and I after every question, I would be like, "Okay, you gotta go start charging." And then I just I flew too close to the sun, so now I'm lying in my bed. Uh, could, yeah. What question could, were we on? Uh, firstly, could you show could you show me your bed? Uh, oh damn! This is yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Like Burt Reynolds and Cosmo. Okay, so that that goes perfectly with the next question. Um, who are you dating these days? Uh, are you dating? No. No, no. I never talk about that really that much. Oh, like you don't want to? No, no. It's not. I don't want to. I just there's I have nothing to report. There's no. I'm not. I, I don't know. Are you, as the kids would say, on on the apps? No. Oh. No. So you're single no, and I have content. No. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't really give a shit about this. I just I'm more focused on comedy. Comedy is my girlfriend now, I guess. Well, it was until Yeah. I just uh, uh, uh yeah, I I don't I don't know. Uh Okay. Uh you know, I've heard uh I've had feedback. I've had people tell me that they uh, they think you're really hot based on watching Trevor's pet. Like more than one human woman has said that. Really? And yeah, so it brings me, like, are you, are you hot? Do you identify as hot? Are you a hot man? 
This was an audience question? <laughs> no, no, that was from me. Like, this is just in my, since you've been well, doing your show, well, different people have told like me. Asking, that's like asking, that's like asking somebody, like CBC last week on the Ontario Today, they were like, they, were, they wanted specifically to hear from frontline workers, frontline healthcare workers, long-term care workers. And the question was like, do you think you're a hero? And everyone who called in was like, no, I don't think I'm a hero. Because you're not going to, you know, like yeah, everyone sure. loves to throw that word around. But it's, I feel like it's the same thing asking someone if they're hot. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, some people think I'm attractive, I guess. I've been told that. I don't know. But then they hear me talk and they actually have to try to, you know, deal with my personality. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. I get why he's alone at 45. <laughs> I get it. 45. I'm fun for a night or so. And and then uh, damn <laughs> sounds like a motion city soundtrack song but fun for <laughs> this, is, this is my album cover it's just me and fun <laughs> for a night <laughs> uh, have you thought of what your uh, album cover would be because you're putting out an album well, I think I just found it uh, I think it might be that picture that Lewis Hill took at the Rose last year. It's such a good picture. It's my Facebook profile picture. It's just like, it it looks like a professional photo. He's a really good photographer. He's a a professional photographer, I think. Mm, I don't know if he's a professional, but he's one of those guys who's just good at everything. Like, he literally like, oh, I'm off like bear wrestling this weekend. You're right. He does. He's a jack of all trade. He's the world's most interesting man. Ottawa edition. Yeah, and he's like he was like an MMA fighter. He's like he's like fucking James Bond, man. He's he he's a hot man. He's a hot man. Next Same time, age some, next time somebody mentions you as being attractive, I'm gonna throw them towards Lewis Hill. I'm like, you want to see? Why? But no, but why are you gonna do that? Why are you, no, no. Well, if you're fun for a night, Lewis is fun for life. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, like a long time, like a like a decade or two type deal. Yeah. So, just saying. I mean. You know, well, you're you're too available. He's a, I'm not. I'm really not. It's a fucking pandemic. I like. It's not like hey, like I'm not uh, looking for hookups right now. That's I'm getting sure. mixed signals. People, like, yeah, people, do you want me to set you up or not? No, no, I, not not right. Okay, not, not right. Not right now. You just broke a lot of hearts out there, Trip. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, I'm kidding. Leave your life. Um, well, it's what, what, like I'm like a say on the air, like, oh, yeah, please. Like, it just sounds weird. I don't know. Well, but then it might be like a really easy way to attract positive attention. Yeah. Definitely negative attention for sure, but maybe some positive as well. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. I'm kidding. Anyway. Um, but I know lots of 50 year old women if you're interested. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good, good, good. Um, hey, if you could do any uh, comedy tour with the living or the dead comedians and you were to MC, who would you book to open feature in the headline? If I were the MC? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, sorry, who could you rep- who would I book as the <laughs> headliner and the middle? And the opener, living or dead. Like any comedian from any time. Oh, I don't know. See, See, like, the thing is, the people that I like are so good that it's just, like, I can't imagine them just doing eight minutes. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the obvious answer, I guess, like, any guy my age, not any guy my age, but, like, I would... Uh, I, I think I, Bill Hicks would probably be on the show. I'm not sure if he'd be the headliner, but, I mean, he could be insufferable, but... He's a role model, right? I mean, in a way, because like everybody, not everybody, but like, he's, I don't know, people like he's kind of a god, right? People hold him in reverence. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Pepitone would be on it. Uh, I love him. He's another role model. He's a guy that I look to as like, I, uh, I want to be like that guy. I don't think I've heard of him. Old and angry. <laughs> yeah, he's really funny. He's a... Uh, he does a lot of anti-consumerist, anti-capitalistic stuff. It's pretty, oh, that does seem pure. Right, it's right up my alley for yeah. sure. Like he's very, he's very left-wing. That's part of his appeal to me. Uh, in Stanhope, I guess maybe I don't know. I guess I'm. I it, I see. This is yeah. This is something I should be able to give a better answer to. But 
I mean, knowing uh, you, that sounds like a great, like it sounds like a real look into who you are as a comedian, kind of like those are yeah, three great. Yeah, I, I mean, there, are, I, I have some. I really like a lot of guys that I don't. I mean, I, I also love Bill Burr, and I know he's like a lot of people don't like him, and like I don't agree with everything he says. Like he can be like he definitely comes across as a misogynist sometimes. Yeah, some of his stuff is like, but like his good stuff, I don't know. It's kind of like when he hits, it's like a fucking. It's like a moonshot. I, I don't know. Yeah. I because I, he's another guy. I and now it's like it's because I'm a guy in my forties, right? Uh, who does like kind of political stuff and rants. So like guys like that are role models to me because I want to be like them, right? Like Stanhope when he's good is so fucking good. Like he's so good when when he's on. When he's not so fucking drunk that he can't even stand up, right? Yeah. Which I I've, I've seen him like that. The first time I ever saw him. I was like, he was so out of it. Like he was basically lying down on a stage. It was, oh. Yeah, it was in Montreal. It was during Just for Laughs and he called it Just for Spite. Oh, like he wasn't booked on the festival. <laughs> no, no. And that was the whole point of the show. It was like a That's fuck funny. you. Yeah. And this like really attractive woman walked in during his set. And he's like, are you sure you're supposed to be here? <laughs> like, look around. You know, there's not a lot of attractive women here, okay? Like, he's like, did Bruce Hill send you over to spy? <laughs> was, yeah. well, that's fine. Just that shit. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I would say, yeah, Bill, Bill Burr, Stan Hope, uh, I don't know, Eddie, Bill Hicks. I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, Trevor, there's like only all... the three. There's only three spots available. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, I don't okay, know. sorry. That's not, and they're all, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I'm a, I feel... Like all the guys I mentioned are, uh, you know, white men, right? Uh, most people actually pick white men. I found, even, even the the women so far, all all two women. You know, actually, and again, this is another guy that a lot of people on the left don't like, but I don't really fucking care, even though I'm a left winger. Um, fuck, man, Patrice O'Neill's last special before he died was really good. Elephant in the room. Yeah, that fuck, that was good. I was blown away. It was so because I didn't really know his stuff that well. I didn't really watch that. I mean, I've seen some of it, but that one was like, fuck, it made me laugh a lot. It was really good. Yeah, I'm not a. Still I'm not, not a women a Who would be the first woman you book on that tour? Christina. Neilberger. Yeah. Oh, she's great. I. Uh, she's very funny. Um, uh, I think I'd have to say uh, Sarah Silverman. I think Christine is a little funnier. Yeah. See, and I, I don't know Sarah Silverman's more recent stuff. I, I haven't really watched her stuff. I, I haven't watched a lot of stand-up recently. I even, even like, there's a lot of new stuff. I haven't watched Mark Maron's new special yet. He's another guy, actually, to make it up to five now. You really love, like, angry men. <laughs> well, so, Mark Maron, uh, since we're here all night, uh, back, it would have been, like, 07, I guess. So, Nick Carter and I, if you, you remember Nick, right? I love he doesn't Nick, really yeah. do comedy anymore. Nick and I were like best buds. We started around the same time. We were like comedy best buds. And he, he introduced me to Mark Marin. And this was before the podcast. And he was like, speaking of another guy doing the same kind of thing as Stanhope, right? He was doing this like one person show in the same venue as Aziz Ansari. Uh, Aziz Ansari was selling out every show. Mark Marin wasn't drawing flies. The night that Nick and I went to see him, there might have been, I don't even think it was half full. And he was doing this real, like he'd just gone through a divorce. It was pretty acrimonious, I guess. And it was basically just therapy session. Like he was just complaining about, and Nick actually turned to me afterwards and he was like, he pointed, he was like, that guy is you in 10 years, right? And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> now it would be like, now that would be like, well, I mean, he's got, you know, like I know he's had his, right? Like, uh, but yeah, like, cause I, my, uh, my old boss, he was asking me about stand up a couple of years ago about what I, what he should watch. And I, at the time I just watched Marin's last latest special. And I was like, Mark Marin's really good. Check it out. And he watched him and he texted me. He's like, this guy is you, right? You know that? Like, you, you are him. 
And I'm like, yeah, I, okay, okay. I'm flattered, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm a lot angrier than him maybe sometimes. He's not I, really angry. He's more just self-loathing. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm reading his book right now. It's, uh, yeah? It's really good. So I haven't far. read it. Yeah, can you lend it to me after? Maybe. Maybe? I have two I, books out to two different comedians, and it's been a long time. I don't know if I'm getting them back, so they're like the barometer. No, I'm a notorious uh, book giver. Like, I've lent so many books that I've never gotten back, and I really don't give a shit, although there are a couple that I really wish I still had. But I care. I read, like, one book every two years, so I need to keep all of them as proof. So I'll, I'll trade with you <laughs> if you have a book we could, like, share. Like, uh, every like, two years? Wow. I don't read. Would you believe that? I don't read. No, nobody really reads that much anymore. I was just listening to a, a podcast with Jennifer Wiper on it. She reads so much, it sucked. Oh, sucked yeah. to hear her talk about it. Yeah, she, she lets you know all about it, too. <laughs> she enumerates them. Yeah. Book 68 of 2020. Well, this one I just read in the last 20 minutes. You know, it's a graphic novel. Like, like graphic novels do not count. <laughs> she she talked about it on it. Check out Ryan Mullen's podcast. It's really good. <laughs> about how I think that can no, she talked. Uh, yeah, she talked about the. She, you can hear her her thoughts on graphic novels and whether or not they are books. I'm not saying they're not books, but if something you can read in less than a fucking hour, like that, it's like it's like saying like reading a fucking column in the newspaper and calling it a book. Yeah, I read her Instagram feed and call that a book. Actually, that's the most reading I've done well, during she, the pandemic. She, she posts about the books she's read a lot. I. I think it's envy, right? Because like I, I like mm -hmm. to pass myself off as Mr. Well Read. Like and I, I do read a lot, like more than the average person, but that's not saying much. Um, but I find the last month or two of the pandemic, I've yeah. Too much free time really, is no good for anyone. I, I like I'm on my phone too much like everybody and I just yeah. Okay. I have uh, two more questions for you. Because I don't want to be here all night. Trevor, I got pierogies uh -huh. downstairs I'm gonna cook, okay? Oh, okay. Well, um, don't let me keep you from your pierogies. I never would. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I realized Ben Hoggle actually sent me a couple serious questions oh. to ask you. Oh, okay. Hey, hey ben. Um, oh, well, ben. Ben, is, ben would be on that show too, actually. You're only allowed three people and you didn't okay. fully answer. Ben, get ben. ben is my headliner. Okay, then who's opening? Bill Burr? Uh, Doug, Doug Stanhope. Doug and Stanhope. Then, and then uh, Bill Burr and Eddie Pepitone do a split. Split and a uh, split middle and i mean bill hicks is actually dead so it wouldn't mm. happen and you got ben hoggle closing the show with a soft yeah. seven that alienates most no, of the no. crowd <laughs> 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 oh no i've fuck people when he did my show i had a couple of friends there and they still talk about his set i just played golf with one of them like last week and he was like oh man who's that guy that Ben, like that red-headed guy, oh, Ben Hagel, like, oh, man, I love, and he started reciting. I think Ben is a, I actually think this, that he's like my, the best comedian in the city, not the best, but like my favorite, I guess, like the funniest, pure Absolutely. funny, and it's annoying that he doesn't try that hard. I know, he's like um, the male Christina. Well, Christina tries so much harder, I wouldn't, well, maybe, I, I, I don't even like stand-up. Well, yeah, she says that, and then she goes to all the shows and excels, whereas... I know. Well, that, Ashley's a bit like that, too. Like, Ashley's so fucking funny, but she just says, like, oh, I don't even like stand-up. I'm like, what is wrong with me? You don't get one of I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, if she, she works at the club, so it's there all the time, it must be it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Who are your um, favorite new, new comedians? Who are your favorite new comedians? Yeah. Young. In Ottawa? Yeah, yeah, I'll say Ottawa. Oh no, I don't, oh god, I hate friends. getting asked these questions. No, because then like I'll forget somebody and they'll be like, oh, that fucking asshole didn't think of me. And I'm like, ah, fuck. And you know, that's what everybody says when I ask them, but I don't think anybody cares. And I think, like, I think there's only four people watching at this point. Right. This will be our secret that I'll tell everyone. Historically. I don't know. I, it's hard to think of, uh, who are you most excited to see after the pandemic? Like, to see do comedy. Like, whose sets are you checking out for? Well, Tavis. Uh, Tavis, for sure. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, Tavis and I are um, pretty tight. Uh, Simone Holder is uh, really funny. She's, like, for the amount of time she's been doing it, she's 
really progressing. Um, yeah, her goal lead, Sydney Crosby turning, on top of her. Turning, yeah, she's turning some heads. Uh, Melanie Page is really funny, uh, too. She's I've only seen her a couple times, but uh, she's really confident for somebody so new. I don't know. She's really funny, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, like, maybe she has, like, a – it's almost like a – like I don't know if she has, like, a public speaking background or something because she's really natural. Yeah, she's good. That's nice. Um, I'll investigate, actually. I'm not sure. No, no, yeah, I, I'm just talking out of my ass. I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, curious. Yeah. Uh, and I – fuck, I don't know. Uh, I mean – Jeffrey Davis is, I mean, I don't know if he still counts as new, but, like, that guy is just so naturally funny. He's, I can't believe you're the first person to mention Jeff. I think he's really good. Oh, Jeff's amazing. Jeff is the best roaster in Ottawa. He's, yeah. he's so good. He's better than Tavis. Whoa, those are fighting words. You no, know, I mean, Tavis is probably mad that I said that, but I, it, I don't know. It's pretty – fuck you. Like, okay – I don't know. I, I don't think he'd be mad. No, I think yeah, like I think, Jeffrey I'm, won. I think the point where like I'm, I don't know, because the last two times I've done roasts, I've eaten shit, mm-hmm. and I used to be good at them. Like I used to, I was best roaster one year at the roast. Like usually I do okay at the roast. I mean, I you know I, I, I do all right. And last, like last year, I was way too hammered. But was that when you won best pro? Yeah, it was the end of the night, right? So Dude, just, that's so funny because I remember your entrance. Your entrance was really funny, but yeah, like I think. And me specifically, like I was for sure blackout drunk. So I remember you making this really elaborate entrance and then basically passing out. I don't remember anything. Yeah, there was there was a lot of because that's the thing. Everybody just it's like drunk as a poet on payday, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so by the end of the night, it's like I don't know. Maybe we should hand out the awards in the afternoon and then do the you know. <laughs> but then that's not as much fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. The bros just. Fuck. Yeah, Jeff uh, Jeff always brings the house down. He's the he's the roast master. Je- oh, wait. I guess you can't really make any Jeffrey Ross comparisons now. He's- well, if you knew Jeff Davis like, Davis like I know Jeff Davis, then you can. No, I'm perfect. We talked about, uh, we talked about uh, Napanee a lot. Uh, Is he from his Napanee? hometown. Okay. His, his hometown, yeah. I have a theory that you can't drive by Napanee without somebody mentioning that Avril Lavigne is from there. Yeah, that is their what they're best known for, for sure. Um, I mean, if it, a, a big global pop star comes from your little uh, burg, I mean, you know, you got to celebrate it. Even Okay, so let's get to Ben's questions, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I want to know where he's going to go from here. And then I said, do you mean in life? And he said, yes, and if it involves stand-up or not. Oh. And then he said, does he want to have kids? Is he seeing anyone just bro stuff? Why are, do people actually care about that shit? I don't What do you mean? That's all people care about. Think of it from his perspective. He's me, like a young it's comedian. Me, it's, it's boring old me. But in a way, you're Captain Ottawa, right? Like you're the guy because every every comedian thinks like I want to move to Toronto, but in the back there they're like, if I come back. So it's like you're like yeah. you are everybody's Contrary like best case tale. scenario. Like, yeah well not even that because uh it could be worse like there are people that moved to toronto that were so much funnier than me like and they just stopped doing comedy yeah and then you never hear from them again you never, yeah. Never, yeah it's like yeah well toronto ottawa, ottawa was my safety valve i guess yeah uh i yeah uh, my future definitely, yes, involves stand-up. I mean, I, I'm trying to do other stuff, too. I, I'm trying to write, like, a couple of different script ideas that I, like, I have a couple of ideas for things I want to do. I was actually wanting to film one of them this summer, but then this happened. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I stand-up is still, it's going to be, like, it was a pretty big part of my life before the pandemic hit. Like, I was out, you know, almost every night, really, somewhere. Uh so yeah, it's in my future plans for sure. It's I can't wait to start doing it again. It's uh, where I'm truly happy. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, uh, do I want kids? Absolutely not. Um, really, you're so sure. I 100. I've never. 
uh it's ruined relationships or, or like it's based like we you know it's like this isn't gonna work out because you don't want kids kind of thing that's but my not wanting them supersedes some like I, yeah i just never Right. I don't know why. I kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say I had like the happiest childhood in the world. So, um, maybe that was, maybe that's part of it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I can barely support myself right now. And I, yeah, I just, I wouldn't want the responsibility because I know it would turn me into a neurotic mess. Turn you into more. one. Yeah. Yeah. Say. Even more, <laughs> even more. What if you did get that uh, sugar mama situation going, like where financially like, everything was taken care of, and her one caveat was she wants some little Trevor babies. Right. Well, yeah, that's that's uh, that's Tavis's situation, basically. I, mean, I don't know if that's a sugar mama situation. Like, no, no, not a sugar mama. But Tavis too. stays home with Charlie. No, it's great. He's he he he, he, he want, Tavis wanted children. Yeah. Uh, unlike me uh i don't know it would i guess it would yeah i'd have I'm, i wouldn't rule it out a hundred percent that's funny i wouldn't uh, have, yeah well it, i mean see and if you have money like that kind of money she probably like people like the actual one percenters the people who love to go on about the value of hard work and how they're rich because they work so hard like they're actually so fucking lazy. They don't even raise their own kids, right? So like, yeah. you just hire an old pair, right, to like raise the kid for you. So yeah, I guess oh, I'm off to the golf course. See ya. Mm. You could just be like a traveling comedian with your sugar mom with like allowance she gives you. <laughs> that'd be so fun. Oh boy, yeah, that'd be. Uh, that that would you know just okay. Now you be a good boy. Now here's your money. Here's your okay. Thanks, mom. But you wouldn't be allowed to have like sex with other people. That'd be the one caveat. No, no, of course not. That's, You'd be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, I. Sorry, can you hear my cat right now? I did hear a cat. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. He's really horny right now. Okay. Okay. Well, I then. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, before I go, I just wanted Not to promote Rochelle's business card she gave me. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Rochelle's uh, funny. So nobody, nobody hustles business-wise in comedy like Rochelle. I, I wish I... Yeah. I, you should, like, with Trevor's I, pad I, and shit, like... I, again, I, I feel like I've gotten better at it, but I'm not a natural at that stuff. Yeah. I'm very Bill Hicks that way, where I'm like, oh, fuck it. If I'm funny enough, they'll just come to me. It's like, yeah, no, it doesn't... Well, I, I think Trevor's pad, like the show, my numbers were okay. And then like Howard and Dan were like, okay. So they basically were like, can you maybe hustle a little like social media? I'm like, and you know, normally I think Trevor reaction would be like, fuck you, you know, but I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, I'll try it. And so I've been. Like when the show was on, I was really like annoyingly, I think almost like on Instagram and Facebook, I promoted, I promoted, I promoted. Like I fucking get to promote it where I was sick of it. I was like, right. I fucking hate doing this. I don't enjoy it. I don't. I, I hate. So I, I'm not. It makes me feel like I'm trying. I don't know. It's weird, right? Yeah. It's embarrassing. It's a business. Huh? It's a business, right? Like if you're a real estate salesperson, you know, you oh well, I people just come to me. You know, they know I'm good at selling houses. It's like, no, that's why they put their faces on fucking bus stop benches and on, like, you know, like, and they, you know, like, it's like you gotta, I, I gotta get better at that for sure. Like, I, you know, that's our new post-pandemic resolution. You do more hustle, yeah. hustle more. Hustle. I know because specifically with these cards, man. Because I'm just gonna start showing Rochelle's card every every time I interview somebody as motivation should i should i go get one of my cards i have a couple left I have some business you have cards. one yes and like mail it to me too okay i'm sure i probably gave you one at some point but you maybe used it to roll a joint filter or something i would never roll my own drugs mm -hmm. uh right. do you have anything you want to say to the little uh what would you call your fans do you have a name for them your, your fans trevor pads no you're a trevor something with pads like in the lilies or uh frogs 
No, I don't. I, there's no. I, I, I am not at the level of fame where I think I have an identifiable group of. Uh, well, do you have anything to say to my there, young boys? There, there, there are dozens of us. Dozens, <laughs> literally dozens. I think one day you'll hit twelve. Don't don't beat yourself up. Hey, uh, Wambi. Hey, Wambies. Uh, we raised uh, ten dollars, and by we raised, I mean one person donated ten dollars. Oh, okay. Well, that's better than nothing. I should I should give them some more money. Like I've given them. A, I didn't screenshot and put on Instagram or anything. Doesn't count, Trevor. Sorry. <laughs> Do it. They didn't get that. Yeah. You didn't screenshot it. Yeah. No. Sorry. This donation. If you if you don't screenshot this and put this on Instagram, then we can't take your money. We're legally not allowed to take your money. Uh, feel like a dick for saying that, but. No, it does. Um, anyways, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, it was my pleasure. I, uh, I, I, I do enjoy doing stuff like this uh, yeah. more than I enjoy watching videos of myself Good. doing comedy. You, uh, sound, uh, you sound healthy in the brain. Like, you sound more healthy than I anticipated, actually. Oh, so really? Like, yeah, well, you sound no, like you're in good... Like, no, you're... I, see, I have this reputation as being, like, so uh, just miserable all the time, and I'm, yeah. I'm not. I mean, like, I'm... I'm miserable more often than the average person, probably, yeah. But I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm miserable all the time. Like, I'm quite pleasant to have a nice conversation with, you know, like this. A lot of the time. Really. Yeah, yeah. Let's, um... Just, uh, you know, I had I got home, had a nice dinner, and smoked a joint. And, yeah. You did my show high? Well, I'm, I'm not high, Trevor. but I, I, mean, I spoke smoked a joint like two, three hours ago when I got home from work. So I'm not, no. What's it? Are you, are you, if, if I were like, would you be upset about this? Like, what's it matter? You no. can't tell. No, you're right. I interviewed. You can't uh, even tell. I did a thing with her dad once and he, he was high as we were doing it. And I was like, what's oh, your shit. dream? What's your dream comedy tour? He was like, fucking hate that kind of question man what like he just act ask like you act like i asked him a very offensive question and i was just like can we just do this when you're sober but no, it's never but did i did i do anything like that did i give any no trevor you were great i'm kidding. kidding jeez fucking nancy Michelle. reagan nancy reagan here just say no i can't have somebody using the demon marijuana on my show it's just a weekday you know what i mean let christ into your life yeah, I don't drink anymore, so this is my vice. Oh, I've doubled down. Not, not forever. <laughs> <laughs> Double down. You know what? I vow to drink even more. <laughs> I promise. Uh, anyways, text want, me. Text me, okay? I'm going from three and eight to six. All right. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, baby. Good night.